Good health to you, fellow Ukrainians. A brief report of the day. I held important coordination meetings. The Prime Minister, the Chairman of the Verkhovna Rada, our international experts, and the office's domestic political bloc. We agreed on a course of action for the coming weeks. In particular, the government has approved the proposals of the Verkhovna Rada to adopt amendments to the state budget, with more than half a trillion hryvnias allocated for defense additionally. All funds will be used to provide financial support to the military, to support our defense sector, and to buy defense equipment, including drones. We will do everything possible and impossible to strengthen our warriors. We also discussed humanitarian demining, something that is very vital, literally. As of now, more than 170,000 square kilometers of our territory remain dangerous because of enemy mines and unexploded ordnance. A significant part of this territory is the land of our farmers, the land that has been cultivated. So today we discussed how to intensify this work, to speed up humanitarian demining and increase cooperation with partners. We discussed how to support our farmers. The second sewing season has already started during the full-scale war. Last year, the heroic efforts of our farmers and all workers in the agricultural sector made it possible to preserve Ukrainian agricultural production and Ukraine's global role as a guarantor of food security. And I thank everyone who contributed to this. The government is working on appropriate steps to support the industry. We also discussed the situation in the energy sector, which has been normalized. In fact, we are meeting the energy needs of Ukrainians throughout the entire territory of our state, the free territory of our state, in accordance with the generation capabilities. We continue to prepare for the next heating season, both in terms of accumulating resources and protecting our energy facilities. The coming weeks are planned to be quite active in terms of international communication, both in order to strengthen our defense and to strengthen Ukraine's position in the fight for justice, that is, in the fight to punish Russian murderers. We are preparing news. We are also working to add new sanctions against Russia. Recently, Canada took a significant step by expanding sanctions on imports of Russian aluminium and steel. I thank Canada for this decision, for this signal to the international community. We must not only limit the capability of the terrorist state to circumvent existing sanctions, but also impose new ones to prevent Russia from adapting to global pressure. The less the Russian ability to adapt the sanctions, the sooner we can restore the territorial integrity of our country and return peace to Ukraine. And of course our defense forces, our soldiers and global pressure on Russia are the only effective guarantee of protecting the freedom of Ukraine, Europe and the free world. As always, I was in touch with our commanders and intelligence. It is very tough in the East, very painful. We need to destroy the enemy military might, and we will. Bilohorivka and Marinka, Avdiivka and Bakhmut, Vuhedar and Kamenka, and all other places where our future is being decided where our future, the future of all Ukrainians, is being fought for. I am grateful to each and everyone who is now in combat. Thank you to everyone who defends their positions and fights for Ukraine and brothers in arms. Thank you to everyone who never lets down those who are next to them on the front line. I would like to commend the warriors of the 92nd Separate Mechanized Brigade for their successful actions in the area of Bakhmut. Thank you, guys. Glory to all Ukrainian warriors. Glory to our unbreakable and beautiful people. Glory to Ukraine. Слава нашему незламному і прекрасному народу. Слава Україні.